The Boston Bruins let Saturday's game against the Philadelphia Flyers slip away, and with it, first place in the Atlantic Division. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be. Today is Monday, March 25th, and I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Bruins part of your daily routine. Free and available on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. My name again is Ian McLaren. I am a lifelong Bruins fan. I've been writing about this team for various outlets for 20 years, covering the NHL as a job for about 10 years now, and delighted to be back talking all things black and gold here with you, despite the fact that the Boston Bruins are coming off a loss and have lost first place in the Atlantic Division. Before we get into that, a quick reminder, you can find the podcast on social media at Locked NHL Bruins, and you can find me, my hockey thoughts and dad jokes at Ian C. McLaren. Now for the second Saturday in a row, the Boston Bruins were matched up against the Philadelphia Flyers last week. It resulted in a 6-5 win that was pretty back and forth. This time around, the Bruins were not so lucky coming out with a 3-2 loss in which they managed only 20 shots on goal, which is fairly disappointing for a team that uh, was coming off a loss to the New York Rangers and had a real chance to bounce back against a team in the Flyers that's really fighting to hold on to their playoff spot. And that they did. They came out with a bit more desperation. Um, You know, the Bruins got caught with... Brad Marchand taking that unsportsmanlike uh, misconduct in the uh, second period. Or when was that? I can't remember exactly when it was, but, uh, you know, he had a knee-on-knee collision with Eric Johnson. uh, Furious that there was no call, received an unsportsmanlike penalty instead. And that just kind of set the tone for the Bruins. Every time it looked like they were getting a step up on the Flyers, Philly would come back. Now, Philly did take a one nothing lead on a Travis Konechny goal in the uh, second period. That was all the scoring through 40 minutes. Justin Brazo stayed red hot with his fourth goal, fifth point uh, in the last few games to tie things up. But then Travis Konechny comes right back, gets the lead for the Flyers. 16-12, less than a minute later, Danton Heinen ties things up. But then... Tyson Forster snipes home the game winner with about a minute and a half remaining to put the Flyers on top in this one. Again, the Bruins only managed 29 shots on goal. They went 0 for 2 on the power play. Um, Blocks were 18-8 in favor of the Flyers. Hits were even, 39-39. The Bruins had just... A real lack of jump in this one. And for whatever reason, they just could not uh, get the upper hand on on the Flyers. A couple big mistakes. There was a, a Hampus Lindholm giveaway that led to a breakaway attempt that was stopped, thankfully. Um, but again, the Bruins just could not keep the Flyers at bay. And when they were able to match things up, they quickly allowed the... Um, the Flyers to to take the lead. Danton Heinen did score. He said at this time of year, it's tight hockey. You don't want to turn pucks over. And if you look, you know, he turned one over. It went back for a goal the other way. Um, a costly turnover for Heinen in the offensive end resulted in that quick transition for the Flyers and Forrester beat Olmark glove side to secure Philly's 
36th win of the season and help them maintain a playoff spot for the time being, although the Washington Capitals are charging up pretty hard. So that was a tough break. Uh, even though he had the goal, it was a positive there, but ultimately um, led to the turnover that led to the game winner the other way. With that loss and a Florida Panthers win on Sunday over, uh, who did they beat last night? Over, over the same Flyers. The Bruins are now outside of top spot in the Atlantic Division. Now, they are level with the Panthers at 97 points, but the Panthers have a better point percentage because uh, they have one fewer game played. 46, 20, and 5 are the Panthers. The Bruins are 41, 16, and 15. And if you look at uh, points, the Bruins are now tied with four other teams at 97 points. So technically, they're in seventh place, despite only being one point out of first overall. Uh, the Canucks, New York Rangers, one, uh, two at 98 points apiece. Identical 690 point percentages with 11 games remaining. Uh, then you have the Panthers, the Colorado Avalanche, the Carolina Hurricanes, Dallas Stars, Boston Bruins, all tied at 97 points. The Panthers Avalanche have a bit of an edge with fewer games played. So they have 683 point percentages. The Bruins, Stars, Hurricanes tied at 674. And out of all seven of those teams, the Bruins have the lowest goal differential at plus 41. You have Vancouver up top at plus 60, Florida at plus 58, Colorado at plus 57, Carolina plus 52, Dallas at plus 48. You even have the Oilers sneaking in there at plus 47, and then the Rangers plus 46. Jets plus 45, and then the Bruins at plus 41. So they're way down the list when it comes to um, goal differential. So again, the Bruins are right there in the thick of it in the playoff, or sorry, in the President's Trophy race, but they're going up against six other teams right in the mix. There's six teams with, or seven teams within one point of the President's Trophy. So that's anybody's game at the moment. Again, do we care about the President's Trophy? Not so much. It would be cool to win it back-to-back -back and in the centennial season. But once the playoffs start, it doesn't even matter. I'm After last year, I'm completely over, you know, oh, they should finish in this spot so they can match up against this team. Or it's better to finish in the, the first spot so that you play the second wildcard team. That will be a much easier matchup. We all know that is way out the window. That's a tired narrative once the playoffs start literally anything can happen so once they're in that's all that matters and uh you just want them playing good consistent hockey and closing games out here down the stretch and they were unable to do that on saturday against the flyers and there's a huge road trip coming up here for the bruins which begins uh wednesday night or no is it when does it start? It starts, uh, well, we'll talk about that here as the podcast continues. If you're looking to go to a Bruins game once they're back from the road trip or the Red Sox coming up soon, Celtics, there's no better place to check out than Game Time. Game Time has views from your seat so you know exactly what to expect when you get there they have the game time guarantee which means if you find better seats in the same section or row for less game time will credit you 110 percent of the difference the fast and easiest way to buy tickets for all sports music comedy and theater near you and again they're all in prices show your total up front so you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. I've been looking on there for Blue Jays home opener tickets. About to jump on a pair coming up. Uh, excited for that. Now, all you have to do is download the Game Time app. 
Create an account and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms do apply, but again, just create an account, redeem code Locked On for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets at the lowest price guaranteed. Thank you so much once again for making Locked On Boston Bruins part of your daily routine. Free and available on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. And YouTube, we also have a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming you might hear on Fox Sports or ESPN. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's also part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The Bruins will now hit the road. Well, they'll stay on this road trip, actually, because Saturday's game was in Philadelphia. They are in the midst of a six-game road trip that will continue tomorrow night in Florida against the Panthers. It will extend to uh, Wednesday night against the Tampa Bay Lightning. And then they will have a couple days off before they travel to Washington to take on the Capitals. And then they will go down to Nashville to take on the Predators, who are the hottest team in the NHL. I believe they're on a 17-game point streak. And then they'll close it off with a game against the Carolina Hurricanes on Thursday, April 4th. Now, all of these teams are in the playoffs at the moment. If you look at Florida, again, tied with the Bruins for first in the Atlantic, so that will have major implications. Uh, The Tampa Bay Lightning, currently in the first wildcard spot, six points clear of Washington, who's in that second wild card spot, and seven points clear of the Detroit Red Wings. So, Tampa, a very good team. They're seven, one, and two over their last 10. Washington, seven and three over their last 10. They've won two in a row, and they will be desperate for points to stay in the thick of the Eastern Conference playoff race. And then the Bruins will go down to Nashville to take on the Predators. They're 8-0-2 over their last 10. They've won five in a row. And they are currently holding on to the number one wildcard spot in the Western Conference. Five points up on Vegas and nine points up on St. Louis, who is outside of the playoff picture. They're only five points back of Winnipeg for second or sorry, for third in the Central Division. And then, of course, the Bruins will go to Carolina to finish off this road trip. They also have 97 points and looking to catch the Rangers for first in the Atlantic. So all five of these teams coming up on this road trip are, in the words of Larry David, pretty, pretty, pretty good. And the Bruins... You know, looking at the Atlantic Division standings, they are eight points up on Toronto, but the Leafs have two games in hand. Boston only has 10 games remaining on their regular season schedule, while the Maple Leafs have 12. So if you drop some points on this road trip and the Maple Leafs win a couple games, and take advantage of those games in hand, you could have a situation here where there's a bit of a fight going on for second in the Atlantic division with home ice advantage in round one up for grabs. And, you know, the remainder of Boston's schedule following these five road games, it's not super easy either. In fact, their first game back at home, after this road trip will be against the Florida Panthers. And then they will host the Hurricanes. A few days off before they take on the Penguins, who are a bit of a a dumpster fire right now, not making the playoffs. But then they end the season on a back-to-back in Washington and then at home against the Ottawa Senators on April 16th. 
So the Bruins can't afford to coast here. It's not like last year where they had this huge lead and, you know, kind of made the mistake of not resting guys down the stretch. This time around, they won't have that luxury of resting guys necessarily. They'll be looking to keep the foot on the gas all the way through to game 82 and looking to enter the playoffs with that win every night mentality. Um, Again, right now, if the playoffs started today, they would have home ice advantage in round one against the Toronto Maple Leafs. They did beat Toronto 4-1 twice very recently, but there's no easy outs when you get into the postseason. It's a completely different animal, as we know, and you just want to be playing your best hockey once the playoffs come around and key for that will be getting Jeremy Swayman going here. Once again, he's had a few off nights since the trade deadline. Linus Olmark had been playing uh, very, very well did have not the sharpest game on Saturday against, uh, against the flyers and both will be in action here coming up this week with those back-to-backs in Florida against the Panthers and then the Tampa Bay Lightning, and we will preview the Panthers game more fully on tomorrow's podcast. Uh, Coming up, we're going to discuss a couple news and notes items with respect to some Bruins prospects, and we'll do that here as the podcast continues. I am a huge fantasy hockey guy, and... I am so enamored with the Sleeper app because they allow for some big-time winning. Regardless of what the Bruins do on any given night, you can win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. It's our number one choice because you can win up to 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether studs like Sidney Crosby, David Posternock will record more or less than their sleeper projections for goals, assists, plus minus, and more in a given game. To win 100 times your bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. So win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey on sleeper. Start paying attention, nail your picks, and win big. Use promo code LOCKEDON to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code LOCKEDONNHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. All right, let's wrap up with some news regarding a couple Boston Bruins prospects, beginning with... Some very bad news for our boy Fabian Lysel. I had been kind of hoping to see him up with the big club at some point, but apparently he's likely to miss significant time here with an injury suffered recently playing with the Providence Bruins. Uh, He's had a very strong season so far with the Baby Bees, 56 games, uh, 15 goals, 50 points, and he's been heating up lately with seven assists over his last five games. However, he suffered an upper body injury against the Charlotte Checkers on March 23rd. He fell to the ice, uh, slid hard into the boards, needed help getting off the ice. And uh, Providence head coach Ryan Muganel provided an update on Lysel's injury. Uh, This according to Mark Diver. He said he's going to miss probably significant time, I would imagine. It's disappointing. He was starting to play really, really well. Uh, Just brutal news for Lysel, Boston's top prospect. He's been really making a case for a call-up lately, Uh, but it looks like he's going to miss significant time. And, you know, depending on when Providence's playoffs begin and end, they usually have the Black Aces that come up, and or at least with the team during the playoff run. Uh, It would have been great to see Lysel as part of that group and soaking in just that playoff experience and and watching uh, the guys get ready for these games and and part of the skates. Uh, But 
looks like he's going to miss some time and we wish him all the best in a speedy, speedy recovery. Be really shocked if he's not in the opening night lineup uh, next season. Now, another prospect has signed his entry level contract and that is forward Riley Duran, a two year entry level deal with an annual contract. NHL cap hit of $867,500. He will report to Providence on an amateur tryout for the remainder of the season. He was a sixth round pick in 2020. uh, Played in 35 games with Providence College this season. Nine goals, seven assists for 16 points. Six foot one, 194 pounds. Uh, he played five games with Team USA at the 2022 World Juniors. Two goals, three assists for five points. And while it's generally a long shot that a sixth-round pick um, makes it to the NHL, it's uh, great for him that he was able to sign an entry-level contract and that the Bruins see enough in him to to sign him to that deal. Uh I always look at Dauber prospects for info and analysis on guys coming up. They say he's a two-way center with good hands and playmaking ability. Needs to add some size, some bulk to improve his physical game. Um, They project him. NHL certainty is at 4 out of 10 and uh, possibly some probably third line maybe bottom six potential. So we'll see what becomes of Riley Duran, probably destined to play for the Providence Bruins next season. All right, that's it for today's episode, my friends. Disappointing loss on Saturday to the Flyers to begin this road trip. They will now head down to Florida to take on the Panthers and Lightning. We'll preview that game, the Panthers game, on tomorrow's podcast and bring you all the latest on the black and gold here on Locked On Boston Bruins because we are part of the Locked On Podcast Network and we talk about your favorite team every single day. Happy Monday. I hope you all had a great weekend. My son's basketball team went uh, two and three. Six hours of driving all together this weekend and uh, happy to be back on the desk. Just, uh, you know, Soaking in some quiet after a long, loud weekend in the gym. All right, friends. Thank you so much again. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. We'll talk to you again here tomorrow on Lockdown Bruins, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.